Welcome to Logistics Business Conversations, where we talk with key spokespeople in the logistics industry about topical issues. Hosted by Peter McLeod, editor of Logistics Business Magazine. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. Welcome to the latest Logistics Business Conversations podcast. My name's Peter McLeod, editor of Logistics Business Magazine, and as always, it's my great pleasure to host this conversation. Now, in a traditional warehouse, in the days before sophisticated automation, a mezzanine floor would typically be installed to bring otherwise empty volumetric space into use, often to create extra pick faces to increase office space or to offer additional storage for light goods. However, today's automated warehouse demands a much more flexible and tailored approach, which is where mezzanine and steel structure specialists MyTech come in. I'm delighted to introduce to you today Jeff Green, who's the Sales Director for MyTech, covering the UK, EU and North American markets. Now, to get us underway, Jeff, can you just tell us a little bit about, uh, about yourself and your role at, at MyTech, please? Yeah, of course. Um, I've been in the mezzanine industry for 36 years, um, started off as a fitter and now, um, as you say, are the Sales Director for MyTech mezzanine product line. Um, for our global reach across the EMEA region and North America. Wow, the 36 years from the shop floor upwards. So it's fair to say that you'll have seen firsthand how a supplier of mezzanine solutions has evolved over recent years into something that's uh, considerably more than just that. Um, but before we look at how MyTech has developed uh, its offering to meet the needs of today's warehouse developers and operators, perhaps we can kick off by defining for our audience today exactly what is a mezzanine, Jeff? So basically, a mezzanine floor is an independent level, additional level within a building. Um, you see them in residential properties, not an area we cover. Um, but where we specialise is in the industrial sector and the commercial sector. You'll see plenty of buildings nowadays with extremely high eaves heights. Um, and most of them are built with just a very small office platform at the front. And we specialise in putting additional layers to help provide additional floor space for the client. So so I could definitely see the uh, the benefit of it, but uh, perhaps you can you could spell out what are the advantages that uh, traditional mezzanine flooring brings to warehouses that uh, your customers are seeking. So yeah, in the main, most people just need the additional floor space, especially in the 3PL and the e-commerce world at the moment. We've seen a massive growth in that area. Um, is to provide additional storage space, um, as you said in your intro, picking spaces, shelving, distribution, storage. It covers a, a whole range, and we can we can supply a structure to fit all purpose groups. Now, this is an expression I find myself saying a little bit too often, but do forgive my ignorance. I, I just imagine a mezzanine as a flat platform, but uh, what about when you've got automation in a warehouse? Uh, do, you, do you have to take that into consideration? Absolutely. Um, more and more warehouses nowadays are going down the automated route. We're seeing a great rise in the use of um, pick-to-person robots, um, automated AGV systems, conveyor systems. Um, there's also a product called Auto Store at the moment, which is massive. Um, and again, that needs support platforms for it as well. So, so fairly complex automation can be uh, incorporated. How, 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 how can you go about that and, and what sort of um, challenges do, does that come when it comes to, for example, an auto store or a, uh, or a conveyor? One of, the, one of the key things for us would be early engagement with the client, client so that we can look at what their ideal requirement is and then design a structure to help fulfill that requirement. We work very, very closely with probably... 10 out of the top 15 integrators globally. So we're used to working our platforms to suit their scheme layouts. Autostore, as I said, is, is the new one. It's a growing market. And again, because of the automation and the fulfillment needed, a mezzanine is an ideal fit. You, you talked about getting involved early on in the consultation. Um, what is What are the main chief benefits of of getting involved early you know what can you what can you offer that you can't do if you're just brought in as a as a last minute thought one of one of the main areas where we support is is because of our experience and our knowledge of the industry we've normally seen everything before and we can see 
when we get delivered early schemes where the pitfalls are for the client. For instance, nobody wants vertical cars because they get in the way and nobody wants bracing because again, they get in the way. But what they don't consider is by opening up the grid pan to remove the columns, what the impact is on the slab. So by bringing us in early, we can help design the scheme for them, provide the necessary load information that's required so that they can build the concrete slab to support the mezzanine. Right, so literally from the ground up, uh, a, a, a thicker, more um, stable slab will reduce the amount of columns in the warehouse, which therefore optimizes storage space. Absolutely, yes. And we have we do everything from using an existing building where we'll try and find out what the load capacity of the slab is. We can then advise the customer, based on that information, what the optimal grid pattern is. Most customers in the smaller part of the market will accept that. But when you start talking about the much bigger e-com players, they, they are more interested in having that usable space at ground floor. So when the slab's designed, depending on the size of the grid, they'll either put mass concrete footings in, pile foundations, or as you said, Peter, a thicker slab to compensate for the loads. And we talked about automation earlier on in the conversation. Uh, I guess you've got a design team that are staying abreast of sort of current and future automation trends so that they know how to, uh, to work best with those types of solutions. Absolutely. Again, we, we're one of the largest mezzanine floor suppliers in the UK. Our ambition is to become one of the largest suppliers in Europe and our team grow with us. All of our designers have been with us for a long time. And because of our client retention, they've learned the systems and understand the development of the systems work very closely with our integrated partners. In the uh, ever-changing world in which we live in, not to, uh, uh, or to, shall I say, to paraphrase Paul McCartney, um, is it possible to provide a solution that can be as future-proof as possible uh, when it comes to mezzanines? It is. It's something that we developed a number of years ago. It's what we call our MES7 system. What that provides is it gives the client almost complete flexibility and future-proofing for their mezzanine. It is a premium product, of course, but we found there's one particular econ client who's very global, very large, and they've really embraced the MES7 system because it gives them flexibility as their business needs change in the future. They have the ability to change their first floor, their second floor, their third floor layouts because our structures can accommodate those changes. Jeff, we talked a bit about Ecom just now. Is this typical business that uh, would benefit most from a mezzanine, mezzanine solution? It's one of many that will benefit from the mezzanine solution. We have seen a great rise in the requirement from the Ecom sector, mainly off the back of COVID. Um, but we've also seen logistics and distribution really ramping up. Um, companies such as FedEx, UPS, DHL, they all need to get the their products or their clients' products to their customers quickly. Mezzanine floors help provide that additional space they need and support the automation they need to deliver those products. Jeff, to the best of my knowledge, the instances of accidents involving steel structures, mezzanines and racking are reducing year on year. What sort of measures does MyTech put in place to help increase health and safety in the workplace? We take health and safety extremely um, important. We find it's a, it's a major part of our proposals to clients. We have a, a very experienced SHEQ manager um, who vets all of our risk assessments and our method statements. We have extremely experienced project managers um, that look after the projects as they're starting to go into the delivery phase. Um, and one thing we do on all of our projects is we always supply a site manager so that they can oversee the installation team to ensure they're adhering to the risk assessments and the method statements. Um, and we do this in consultation with our clients. And again, I think it's one of our key selling points and one of the main reasons why our clients keep coming back to us year after year. 
Well, we ran a poll, Logistics Business ran a poll on our socials ahead of this podcast, uh, and we asked, what's the biggest non-financial barrier when deciding to install a mezzanine in your warehouse? And top answer at just under 40% was safety and legal compliance. Well, we've mentioned safety. Uh, What about legal compliance, Jeff? Again, with the design team and the experience we have, we keep abreast of all of the changes to the design codes that are required, as well as health and safety codes, of course. Um, So we're always designing to the up-to-date requirements. The most common one at the moment is Euro Code 3 for steel structures. Um, We have a technical director who, similar to me, has been in the business for 30 plus years. Um, And all of our design team have over 20 years experience. So we think we've got a good handle on it and we keep right up to date with all of the requirements necessary. You won't be surprised to hear that uh, also scoring highly on that poll was the um, need for long-term flexibility and also t- ensuring that space is optimised to the to the max. I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit about the, the flexibility options. Yeah, so again, ultimate flexibility for a client and future proofing is the MES7 system. Um, it's a, a composite mezzanine design which provides very high point loads for racking, shelving, AGVs, automation. And again, if we're involved in the project early enough and we can see this is a requirement, we can explain to the customer what the benefits are. The customer might know what he needs now and in the next 18 months, but can he see, has he got that crystal ball that will tell him how the business is going to evolve and change in five years' time? MES7 gives that flexibility. Wow, that's great to hear. And uh... Talking of customers, we've got a couple of audience questions come in as well. Um, And I wanted to ask you this because it's also mentioned in our poll. Um, The question is, our warehouse currently has limited floor space and we're looking to expand our storage capacity without relocating. How will installation affect current operations? I guess it's a difficult one to answer if you don't know specifically that project. But uh, in in general, what what is the installation uh, process? That's a great question. And as you say, it's not easy to answer without an understanding of what the restraints are on the site. And every single site is different, but every single site is very important to us. So when our sales um, engineers go to site, if it's an, an existing building, they'll get an understanding from the client what their requirements and what their needs are. Obviously, from a health and safety standpoint, we can't have the client's personnel working in the same area we're working in. So one of the things we would advise straight away is the build area needs to be cordoned off. But we'll do that in conjunction and collaboration with the client, our site manager and our projects manager. We can phase the build, we can phase the deliveries, we can phase the installation to suit the client's requirements and keep the disruption down to an absolute minimum. But there's always going to be some disruption. Sure. And uh, we did talk about um, installation and getting involved early as well. Um, I just wondered, um, in in addition to that question, are there any sort of particular site conditions or infrastru- infrastructural considerations to take into account when considering a mezzanine? The main one on an existing building is obviously access, lay down areas for materials, because as you can imagine, the mezzanine floor is just a big boy's Meccano kit in reality but we need to unload it, we need to stack it and store it correctly. So again, it's all about that early engagement, conversations with the client, working together with them to ensure that we can provide them the right solution in the right amount of time for the right amount of money. Um, so so what, sh- what should a customer or potential mezzanine customer, customer be asking questions of their mezzanine supply you know what should they be looking for when selecting a supplier Again, that's that's a really good question because there there are lots of mezzanine floor suppliers we we know that not many have got the the history the track record um that we have and i think that's because we do differentiate ourselves in the marketplace with our experience our knowledge and the way that we work with our clients It's wrong for the client to automatically look at cost because cost isn't always the right answer. There's that adage where people say, buy cheap, buy twice. You're going to make a mistake sometimes with your mezzanine if you buy the cheapest possible because it may not give you what you need. And 
ultimately it may give more disruption to your business, which ultimately is going to cost you more money. Um, I may be the editor of a logistics title, but I do also like to think I'm an average man in the street and I don't know how mezzanine is manufactured. So can you can you let us in on a few secrets, uh, You know, perhaps pull, pull back the curtains a bit and tell us about some of the uh, manufacturing processes? We're quite unique here at MyTech. Um, in the EMEA region, we don't actually have our own factory, so we don't have capacity restraints with a factory. What we do is we work in partnership with fabricators who are located all over the country and indeed all over mainland Europe. And that number is growing month on month. What that allows us to do is, is just give that additional added flexibility to a client so that we can hit dates that they need. From a manufacturing standpoint, luckily I did spend some time training as a welder fabricator in my early days. So I do understand what's needed. And what we do is our design team, once the designs are complete, we'll pass it across to what we call our detailing team. Our detailing team then create the packages for the fabricators via um, a set of drawings and 3D models so that they can understand exactly how they've got to put the steel together. Because it is just a big boy's Meccano kit. Well, I'm a big fan of Meccano, but I don't think we ever had things like um, cold pressed and, uh, and and those sorts of differences. What, 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 is, what are the sort of the, the grades of steel that, um, that can be used? And uh, how, how is uh, how's MyTech sort of making the most of the technology and manufacture that's available to them? Well, we traditionally have always provided what we call a hybrid design, um, which is basically a hot rolled steel framework of vertical columns, main universal beams. Um, we always tend to use the high grade steel, so what's called a 355 steel grade. Those main hot rolled beams are then linked together with cold rolled sections, which are formed on a rolling mill um, from a much thinner gauge lightweight steel and then overlaid with a decking material, be that timber, steel, the MES 7 system. What we've done over the last few years to make ourselves more attractive to the European market is develop our own in-house cold form solution, which is quite a big thing in Europe already. So where we would use hot rolled main universal beams as the primaries, we now you can use back-to-back -back cold form beams as they do in Europe. And we're finding our clients are really interested in this innovation that we've created over the last few years. I mentioned in the intro um, a little bit about, you know, people people would in typically install a, a mezzanine uh, solution to um, carry lighter goods. So um, it kind of brings me on to our second audience question, uh, which is uh, as follows. How do mezzanine floors handle concentrated loads such as pallet racks or heavy machinery versus distributed loads such as personnel and storage? Great question, Peter. Everybody, most people tend to concentrate on that universally distributed load, which as you say is just an area load. The whole of the platform is designed to take a certain amount of weight per square metre. When it comes to the concentrated loans, like the person who's asked the question, what we need to know is what what's the client wants to do? What are they looking to put onto the floor? What sort of point loads are they looking to put onto the floor? A standard hybrid mezzanine designed in a standard, inverted commas, way will support up to about 500 kgs over a certain foot plate size. More and more we're finding People want to put more on top of the floor and they want to increase that point load. So how do we design the mezzanine to cater for that point load? There's a number of ways of doing it. There's what we call the fixed method. So we can put hot rolled sections underneath the decking material to support that point load. Or we can raise them so they're level with the decking for the point loads to sit directly on the beams. The disadvantage with that is it's fixed. It can't change in the future. It gives no flexibility for the client. Or we can utilize the MES7 system, which means that client can put that point load anywhere on that mezzanine floor, can completely change their shelving and racking layout if they want to in the future, because the structure has been designed to accommodate that load all over. So it's time for a compulsory question. Um, I, I'm always, in every uh, aspect of logistics, uh, touching on 
sustainability. And I just wondered if um, there's uh, if, if there's an easy answer to this, Jeff. Is there any ways in which MyTech can help its customers achieve some of these tough carbon reduction or elimination targets? Absolutely. And again, another great question, Peter. We um, recognized a number of years ago that um, people were very interested in sustainability and the life cycle of the product. We worked for a, a period of time with an independent consulting structural engineers organization who are focused all around sustainability. We worked very closely with them so that we could develop our own carbon calculator and we're able to give a customer at quote stage an understanding of what the carbon embedment number is within their mezzanine quote. It's not 100% at the moment. We're tweaking it. We also have to consider the increase in, in desire for green steel, which comes from the electric arc furnaces, where the majority of steel work comes from a standard coal-fired blast furnace. But what we are finding if we have time and we have early engagement, we can deliver blast furnace steel from recyclable sources, anything up to 89% recycled, which is great for the client. One particular e-com client absolutely is adamant. They want a minimum of 80% recycled steel work within their projects, and we're delivering that to them month on month. Right, and at end of life, the the steel to then goes back into that uh, recycle process. Absolutely. We actually have a project that we're in negotiation with right now with um, a very large company, and we installed a, a five-tier pick tower for them a number of years ago. They now want to take that down, rejig it, and reuse it. It's ideal. Um, Jeff, again, from your job title, you have responsibility across the UK, EU, and the US or North America. I, I just wonder if you could tell us uh, perhaps as a, a bit of an overview as you sit across those geographic territories, what the sort of regional differences are. Yeah, the, there are regional differences. Um, in North America, for instance, they don't refer to our structures as we do. We call them mezzanine floors. In North America, they're called platforms because a mezzanine floor is more considered to be part of the building structure. So that was one of the first things that I learned very quickly. One of the other things that I find really interesting working with my North American team is we actually have a factory in North America. Um, we can produce thousands of pounds of fabricated and finished steel work to a very, very high standard. We have our own unique range of system products out in um, North America that nobody else can produce except for us. Um, and yeah, it, it's a great place to be at the moment. You're going to either love this or hate this question. Um, I'm going to ask you, and as it's a podcast, we can't see you actually getting your crystal ball out, but we have to assume you are. Um, I want you to talk perhaps a little bit about the uh, how you see the shape of the market panning out over the, the sort of the short term future, short to medium term future. A great question, and no, I, I can't find my crystal ball at the moment, Peter. Um, I think we there, there has been a period of uncertainty, um, especially this year and especially in the UK. The, the UK market does feel as though it's slightly deflated. Um, however, we're starting to see some green shoots for the UK, and I'm really optimistic that we're going to have another fantastic year in the UK next year. I'm absolutely confident that we will be the number one mezzanine floor supplier in the UK um, as independently verified by Plimsoll from a revenue standpoint. In the EU, it's a completely different market to us. We've only been in it for a few years now. Um, it would be fair for me to say that we're scratching the surface and we've got a long way to go, but I'm absolutely confident we've got the right team in the right place in a market that we can really expand into and make a difference to our clients. They want us to go with them, so that's what we're going to do. North America, again, a slightly a slightly more complex view. Again, I think the market is a little deflated, and there's reasons for that. The election's going on. There's a little bit of uncertainty in the business world. Um, but again, we're starting to see some great pipeline activity from the North American team. And I think next year is going to be another fantastic year as well for them. 
And, and do you see that growth coming from um, clients rejigging existing space, maximizing existing space, or a potentially new build? Um, I think it's going to be a combination of both. We are starting to see more buildings coming through the planning registers and being spoken about by our GC partners. Um, there is a lot of retro work in existing buildings um, as customers want to utilize what they've got um, instead of paying for additional space. And that's, again, just a perfect location for a mezzanine floor. If you've got a building and you've got nine meters plus eaves height, you're paying for that space to heat it and light it. Why not utilize it? Yeah, that makes uh, that makes uh, very good sense. Well, the, the clock seems to be ticking on remorselessly, no matter what we want. Uh, and uh, as we reach the end of our allocated time, I think it just remains for me to ask you, Jeff, sort of if you can summarise in a few words, what benefits can a warehouse operator gain by speaking with a top, top draw mezzanine supplier such as MyTech? Um, I think it's really important to engage us early in the thought process. We get involved in projects that may never happen. We discuss projects that go on for months and months and months and nothing seems to happen. And then we have other ones that just flick of a switch and they're, they're active. Talk to us, get us involved, use and abuse our expertise. It's what we're here for. Great, Jeff. Thank you for your great contribution today. I, I certainly found it extremely educational. Wherever you get your podcasts from, please subscribe to Logistics Business Conversations to make sure the next edition is delivered straight to you as soon as it's released. Until then, it's goodbye from Jeff. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me, Peter McLeod. Goodbye. <laughs>